right, everyone, it is our great pleasure to welcome to the show DC Chief Creative Officer and Publisher, Jim Lee. Thank you so much yeah, for Yeah, bro. Thank Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. This is a cool. We're so glad you could join us. First off, Jim, how are you doing? I'm actually doing pretty good, uh, all things considered. I'm obviously, you know, at home, working from home, uh, like the rest of DC. And uh, it was challenging at first, but I think we've really gotten into the groove. Uh, it's really interesting to see how everyone's really used technology to figure out new ways to work together and collaborate and stay in, in, in contact with one another and support one another. So it's been a real sort of uh, uh, baptism of fire, you know, uh, for the company, you know, really kind of forging this new way of working. Um, but I think people feel pretty confident that we can do what we were doing before, um, but remotely. Yeah, and I know we've all been thinking a lot and been very concerned about the, the sectors of our industry that's been hit hard. You have turned that into action. Tell us about what you've been doing for charity. So I came up with this crazy idea, like I could do something where uh, I raise money for stores that are closed, right, that, that are being hit hard by this pandemic. And uh, I was trying to do something that'd be meaningful that would raise, you know, uh, you know, a certain amount of money. And so I came up with this idea of drawing 60 sketches over 60 days. And um, but now that I'm only 15 of 60 now, 25 percent of the way in, I'm like, I should really should have done 20 for 20. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I should have accounted for being older. Uh, it certainly didn't get wiser. But um, so the idea was I'd convinced myself, well, these will just be tiny little headshots and they'll take me you know, 15 minutes to an hour at the most. The first one was Nightwing and that was relatively quick. Like I said, it probably maybe took like two hours at the most. And then for some reason, something happened and I started putting more effort into it. I couldn't help myself. I don't know what's going on. And I started putting more time and, and before I knew it, I'm, I'm like putting in like six, seven hours. I'm like working till three, four in the morning on these pieces. And I and I do wonder like, what the, what the hell's going on? Like, what is going on? And and I have to think there's a couple things because one, maybe it's because there are people watching right on social media. And so you want to, you know, do your best, impress them or whatever. But I've streamed artwork before I've drawn in front of crowds. So that can't be all of it. And I, I do think there's something subconscious about this and that I'm just really angry. And I, and I think um, a lot of us are in that we're in this situation, right, that we didn't create and we didn't ask for certainly. And and uh, it changed our you know entire way you know, of living and working and our family and this sort of, you know, imminent threat that kind of exists on the horizon for a lot of us, you know, you can't see it, but you feel it, you know, and, 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 and it's with you throughout the day. And it's something that that uh, makes us anxious and, and concerned. And, and so it just, I think it makes me angry. And in a way, I'm sort of sublimating that that anger into the art. I mean, it sounds like it sounds like the art has been therapeutic for you going through all this. Absolutely. There's something yeah. there is something that is happening uh, because I don't mind working hard and feeling the pain of working hard and working every day because I know stores are out there uh, suffering. You know, they've had to lay off their employees or they are struggling to figure out how they're going to make, you know, pay their bills for this month when they've got no new you know, comic book content coming in, uh, no new customers. I mean, it's. It's a crazy time. Jim, um, I have to say a, yeah. a big personal thank you as one of the many, many comic book store employees out there. What you're doing means so much to us uh, and the things that we all share and love. And we really, really appreciate it. No, th thank you for that. I, I appreciate it. Uh, and I'll tell you that it uh, the the reception and the comments from the fans, uh, it does give me encouragement. It is kind of driving me on because there is a point where I go, well, I could just slow up a little. I can, I can take my foot off the accelerator a little bit, but but uh, when they're like going, this is the best one yet online, I'm like, oh God, now I can't let them down. I gotta, <laughs> the next one has to be the best one. How am I gonna do that? And it's insane. And uh, so even my wife is like, going, what are you doing? What's, what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> okay, like, but you keep telling us about yeah. the beautiful art. Can we see any? Yeah, yeah. Do you have anything to show us? Yeah, I brought some pieces here with me. Um, so this is the Batman who laughs. And I'll tell you like, I thought immediately people would go to Batman, the Joker, Superman, but it's really interesting because I let the people that win the auctions decide what the next uh, sketch is going to be. And it's been really interesting to see what they come up with. And it's almost like a, a challenge. And that's part of it too. Like a lot of these characters I've ever drawn before. Batman who laughs I have, but like Batman, Red Rain. Ooh, I love that one. That classic Kelly Jones look. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to, so I was like, yes. Googling Kelly Jones work and I was kind of, 
going back to, it was very nostalgic for me, going back and looking at uh, the images online. And I remember my days of fandom as a reader and uh, what I loved about the stuff. And it was just kind of having fun retracing your steps. And, and I've never drawn Batman like this, obviously, before. And then here's a, a Dr. Fate. I love that Dr. Oh Fate one. I was so grateful for whoever suggested that. It looks so good. And then this one is a, a Batman Beyond, sort of the Arkham Knight from the video game. So it's an interesting mix of characters. The fun of it is I don't know what they're going to give me. And so it's almost like one of those cooking challenge TV shows where they give you the ingredients and then you've got like X number of hours and you got to get it up and out the next day. Jim, you've done so many characters are already all as you just showed us and like big barda what has been your favorite to draw so far uh it's surprisingly been a dead man i wanted to homage a, a certain neil adams cover uh but i didn't want to replicate it exactly so i used that as inspiration and created this kind of haunted image i was channeling a little bit of mike mignola because he, he did some amazing dead man covers jim i know like this is like the whole situation the circumstances is all unexpected but do you think like that this has brought some of your best work out of you According to fans, I, I've spent 30 some odd years doing crap and, and finally I've, I've hit some potential <laughs> that they go, eh, finally, that he's done something I like and like, that's fine, I'll take it. I don't care, I'll, I'll take it. But yeah, I think, yeah, I, look, I, I think it's a different type of project. There's a challenge piece of it. There's a social piece of it. There's the a therapeutic, you know, uh, charity, you know, fundraising aspect to it. And, um, and uh, I, I think to keep myself going, I do have to continue to challenge myself in terms of technique. Like I've got 45 more of these to go, 75%. I just can't continue to do the same toothbrush splatter, right? Okay, so I'd love to hear more about the charity element of this because in addition to your enormous project, DC is doing a direct donation. And can you tell us a little bit about the fund that all of this is going to? Yeah, yeah, so I'm super excited to share. Uh, so first and foremost, we knew that we were going to raise some money to help the stores that were closed or struggling. And uh, we needed to find a partner that was already set up, um, you know, as a, a 501c or, you know, a, a nonprofit charitable organization, something that specialized in the book market. And uh, I had actually reached out to Convo Legal Defense Fund and Charles Brownstein had recommended Bink. And I had never heard about it before. But once I started Googling and doing some research, I realized they were the perfect partner. They had already set up a page. In fact, they already had a fund that serviced comic book shops. So we started communicating with David and Bink. And uh, rather than duplicate efforts and have two different funds doing the same thing, we decided to basically create, sort of unite and create one fund. We're calling it the Comic Book United Fund. DC contributed 250000 I'm going to contribute all the net proceeds um, to uh, of my uh, 60 sketches to this fund, the Comic Book United Fund. And then a lot of other artists uh, out of the blue just are contacting me and saying, hey, this is really cool. Can I participate? Can I, you know, be part of this? Like Art Adams and Jeff Scott Campbell and yes. Walt Simonson, Frank Miller, Bill Sienkiewicz. So I've got I've got a different artist lined up for every day. And uh, I'm super excited because uh, it's, it's something that I kind of hope for that people would go out and, and also start, you know, organizing and fundraising. But I didn't know they would necessarily want to do it with me because uh, I kind of created this crazy situation, but it's been really heartening to see across the industry, all the creators stepping up and doing their part and auctioning off jackets and scripts and photos and memorabilia and comics. Uh, and I, I really think as a cumulative whole, it's going to raise a tremendous amount of money and, and really, really uh, help the stores out in, in, in a big, big way. And I have to say a big shout out to Sam and your incredible team who've been doing some wonderful fundraising efforts around this. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, me, Cami Garcia, Gwenda Bond, uh, Brian Michael Bendis, Phil Jimenez, and the incredible, just over 200 creators now in Creators for Comics. We we were starting this up and we heard from the, the teams at DC, uh, shout out to Courtney Simmons and Clark Bull, and they said, we have this thing coming, it's a secret. So we uh, got the opportunity to say that, yes, we want to contribute the proceeds from these auctions to the uh, the Comic Book United Fund and Bink. So it's just been it's been great to be part of the party. It's been great to contribute to this fund that's going to do so much for comic book stores and indie bookstores. Yeah, I, I, my hats off to you guys. I, it was uh, amazing again to see that this collective effort. And I'll, I'll, let me just say one other thing. You know, uh, in some of the comments, I think someone said like, "Why are you guys putting money towards comic book stores?" Like. Why aren't you giving it to, you know, the frontline, you know, people, you know, uh, in the ER, you know, the ICU units and, and the nurses and first responders. And and I think, look, we're all going to do our part and, and contribute. But I feel like unless we protect 
the, the base, the foundation of our business, we're not going to have the ability to, to support other things and other people. Like we have to make sure that that what we have survives this so that we then have the means to support and help other people and other organizations going forward. If the industry collapses, uh, what do we, we we've got nothing to build off of. So I think, um, yeah, uh, and these are not mutually exclusive, you know, ideas or events or, uh, you know, campaigns. And, and given how long this is going to be with us, I think there's going to be plenty of time for us all to do our parts for everyone. And, and uh, yeah. so I just wanted to point that out. And we're not we're not just protecting businesses or stores. We're protecting our community. Sure. We're protecting our people. You know, we're protecting the people we've known for years, the people who have supported us for years. You know, this is our time to support them. So it's not just about a storefront. It really is just it's the lifeblood of our industry. And stores um, really want to be able to pay you all to make more stories for us. So thank you all the way around. <laughs> well, yeah. I love when they do it. Yeah. I love to see it. Uh, <laughs> So we have been doing a DC Daily Comic Book Club, and we just got our own page on DC Universe. One of my favorite episodes is when we covered a little book you might be familiar with, Batman Hush. Yeah, you know this one? Yes. <laughs> I think now, we reprint this, it every two this years. Book is I think. A gift. <laughs> this book is a gift that keeps on giving. When you yep. first made this book, did you what? What kind of impact did you think it would have? You know, Sam, you're a creator. I, I think you know when, when you sit down, like uh, the the first objective is to have fun with what you're doing, right? To entertain yourself and, and do something that's meaningful and you know that, that you can't wait to get back to and and, and continue to work on and, and tell this story and. For me, it was about getting to work with Jeff Loeb and obviously work on, you know, the biggest character, you know, arguably in superhero fandom, uh, Batman. And so when we did it, I was just having fun and Jeff was throwing me these artistic challenges like, can you do this character? Can you do this character? Can you do it in this environment? Let's do this. Like, you know, it was more of a, a game of one upsmanship, like what we could do to challenge one another creatively. Right. And I would call him and say, well, what about doing this? And so there was a lot of collaboration, but we were doing it all like in secrecy. Like there was not for many, many months for like six or seven months, only three people at DC kind of knew about this project. Right. Yeah. Uh, but now you cut, you know, to many, many decades later, and uh, you you see fans come up and they've got their copies of Batman 609 and and you know they all share these very similar but different stories of how this book was meaningful to them how it got them into comics or brought them into to comics or got them through really dark times and you know difficult times in their lives and you start understanding sort of this impact that your work can have and uh, so I, I, it's hard to predict because you know I, I enjoy every project I'm working on but but certainly I think. You know, we, we hit some magical formula in terms of the character, the creators, the storyline, all the different villains, um, the coloring, the inking, all that um, came together and, and, and was a touchstone for so many different fan, fans over the years. And so, uh, yeah, it, it's look, it's it's super flattering that so many people have enjoyed it. And, um, you know, I'm very thankful that, you know, what, 16 years plus now, it's still, you know, considered you know, one of the top Batman uh, stories and it does very well for us and, you know, in the backless uh, catalog. I wasn't going to say the number out loud, but thank you for aging all of us at once. I really appreciate <laughs> yeah, okay. it. Uh, so if, <laughs> many, if, many if you decades, Jeff, the centuries have passed. And, yeah. <laughs> still before times. Yeah. In the before, before time. So if, if you and Jeff were like one upping each other, kind of like Batman and Hush one upping each other, like which you and Jeff, like which is Batman and which is Hush? Like how did that play out? Oh, uh, I think we, we would take turns playing Hush. That's the fun part. Ah. <laughs> um, no, I think it was, uh, it was more like uh, sometimes you go like, uh, you know, that panel doesn't like, did you mean not to draw any backgrounds or were you just trying to get the page done? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> the shade of it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez. I know exactly which <laughs> panel it is. It's the one in the opera house and it's, you know, Catwoman <laughs> kicking. And I, you know, I asked for that situation because I, I said to Jeff, like, look, I don't know if I've seen Batman in an opera house before. He's like, you know, doing this kind of Phantom of the Opera kind of thing. I love play, that sequence. Yeah, play into so this good. whole gothic aspect of the character. So that's the kind of stuff where I'd say, look, I've got this idea for a crazy ferris wheel that would store all the batmobiles like throw me a scene that incorporates this somewhere in this right and those are my 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 valuable story contributions right. <laughs> okay so from one batman milestone to another yeah. uh we now have detective comics a thousand on the dc universe service so if you would uh, are there any reflections you have a year on from that project what was it like 
Uh, yeah, that was really cool. Uh, you know, I, you know, ever since I've kind of taken on the chief creative officer role, I, I've drawn less, um, and and uh, but I've still been able to do short stories and being able to do that eight page story with Kevin Smith, someone that you know I've long admired, and uh, he had this idea for a story. I'm like, wow, this is brilliant. I can't believe in eighty some odd years of this character, no one has told this story of how he's searched for you know the gun that that took his parents' lives and what did he do with that that artifact and and he came up with something that was really novel and interesting and touching and you know it's just amazing to get to work with kevin so we're, we're we've all been stuck at home not just yeah. us but everybody watching all the fans we're all there with you we're stuck at home one of one of the best ways i felt to pass the time is to go back dig in the crates and reread some of my favorite dc comics jim what have you been pulling out what have you been reading yeah, so I've been reading uh, some classic Wildcats. <laughs> Not because I'm a crazy yeah. Nazi. Yeah, yeah. That's what <laughs> Not, I like to hear. Come on. Yeah, 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 I'm just plugging my own material. No, it's not uh, not the stuff I worked on, but it was the uh, many years later, uh, it was the Alan Moore run um, mm. that Travis uh, uh, drew some of. And uh, it was just a really I'm sorry, cool. do you mean this beautiful book? Oh, my God, yes. That's amazing. <laughs> You read my mind. I just happen to have it here, you know. Like, that, um, yeah. Right. You just have all this uh, Wildstorm stuff in front of you. Like, you <laughs> just yeah. right out of frame. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that 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 material, I, it, it was really an interesting run. He took a lot of the the ideas that Brandon Choi and I set up, and then he kind of turned them on his, you know, on their head. This, you know, it's just a classic Alan Moore riff, like being able to find things in in different ways that no one else envisioned before he introduced you know grifter's brother uh and he created i think one of the best wildstorm villains ever in tau and this was a character yeah. that i think only alan moore could write like how do you write like the smartest most diabolical person in the world if you're yourself are not the smartest or most diabolical person in the world and and alan is certainly <laughs> one of the smartest people in the world and and uh and he showed it through this character. Uh, it, it, to me, it was like almost taunting the reader, like, look how clever I am that I can write this character this way and show you that I'm showing off. And it's still believable. And this character is amazing. And I, it just blew my mind. And, and so it's been a lot of fun rereading that stuff. All right. If you could give one message to DC fans right now during these very strange times, what would it be? Wow. Uh, so I think on a very broad level, I think it's, it's really, uh, you know, like, you know, keep hope alive. Don't give up on 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 hope. And I and I think and I say that because there are definitely times of the day where I feel like I look outside. It's sunny. It's great. The, the kids are happy. They're oblivious to this all. And you go like things are good. And then other times you're reading these these predictions and and you know you realize that that you you're concerned about you know your 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 family, your parents, and and you know it can wear you down. And and you know I think there's there's great relief in. In escapism and entertainment, and uh, you know, we do think of the fans, and and that's really been our guiding principle as we kind of weather the storm. Like, what do the fans need? What do they want? And so that has really kind of influenced even our strategic business decisions, right? In terms of what we're going to publish, and and so we've rolled out this big digital initiative. Uh, really, isn't quote unquote new. It's not, it's really an evolution or expansion of something we started ten years ago. We innovated this thing called digital first which was uh, not digital only or digital exclusive, but digital first. It's just a windowing. Shout and out to Sensation Comics, one of my favorite series. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Allows you to tell great stories with a wider variety of, of creators that, that might only be able to come in for short stints. Uh, it allows you to tell eight page stories uh, that are sold at 99 cents. And you couldn't sell a, 80, you know, a, a 99 cent eight page floppy in a store. You can't do it physically, right? So, but you can do it digitally and you can also have it available every single day of the week. It doesn't all have to drop on that Wednesday. Digital can literally be on 24 seven. And, and that really is the way fans are consuming content today. It's, it's all at our fingertips available at any given time. So I, I feel like this is the step in the right direction. It's definitely a step into the future and you know, we want to build up our, our digital plans even more robustly, which is not to say that we are not, you know, super supportive and that we don't love the direct market and the brick and mortar stores. Uh, you know, obviously this fundraising activity, it's all about keeping the stores alive during this moment of crisis, this period of crisis. But at the end of the day, we need to get our stories out there. Our fans want our content and we have to be creative and innovative in how we do that. And um so I, I feel like 
that will will eventually find a way, right? You know, there might not be conventions in the near term, but that need to associate and share and to commune and and to uh, congregate, even if it's virtually, you see how it's expressing itself. People find a way, they figure out new ways of doing it, and that's what's happening today. And I, I just wanna thank the fans for being there, supporting DC, and uh, you know, and um, we've got a lot of exciting things planned and we're trying to do things that we haven't done before. And I think that's what this moment of crisis allows us to do is really rethink things because we're forced to. And out of that, that need, I think some really great creative ideas will come out of it and kind of point to a, a future that, that, that's sustainable. That's beautiful. Amazing. Heck yeah, bro. One more very important, hard hitting question for you. Why is your eBay store called Chunky Monkey? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's be specific. It's Chunky Monkey 0000, zero, zero, zero. in case you're searching eBay. Yeah. Uh, so for, so I think Chunky Monkey was taken, strangely enough. <laughs> so a lot of my uh, handles had 00, zero for what, like, I think it was pre-2K or whatever. So it was Chunky Monkey 00. zero. And then there was some new overhaul of the, the naming system, and I had to change it. So I, and I'm OCD, so I can't have three zeros for whatever reason, so I had to go to four. And so it's why it's Chunky Monkey, four zeros, because <laughs> three zeros looks funny, right? And uh, I don't know why, I, I think I just thought it was a funny name, because it's not even my favorite flavor. I, you know, I'm a Cherry Garcia no? guy, you know? And uh, so, yeah, I'm not, I don't even really like Chunky Monkey. And so, because I could just see now, like going to conventions and people, I brought you Chunky Monkey, you know, like the big <laughs> cartons of it, like it's all melted. <laughs> it's not my favorite place. Yeah, so I, I think it's a, uh, it's just a vestige of some silly name that I, that I created. And, but that's the account I started and you have to get certified and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I did all that and I didn't want to create a new moniker or a new handle and, and kind of go through that whole process of getting vetted. So. I stuck with it, so that chunky monkey is here to stay. See, my my theory was that the the the, the four O's that that was the noise that the chunky monkey makes. Oh, right, chunky right. monkey. Ooh, ooh, no, ooh, ooh. no, do that right. It will be uh, zero little O capital O zero. Oh, ooh, oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just to throw people off so they can never type in search by seller. Right, <laughs> they'd always get that yeah, O yeah, zero yeah. messed up. So. <laughs> All right, Jim, thank you so much again for Dude, joining us thank today. thank you for being here. This is well, awesome. This is amazing. And congratulations, guys. 400 episodes. I, thank you. I, I remember helping you guys with the launch, and it felt like six months ago, I but I know it was a lot longer. And, you know, you guys have put in so much work and creativity into this and really made it a super success. So congratulations. Thank you, man. And, and thank you for celebrating with us. We appreciate it. Now we need you to draw so many more pictures, so we'll <laughs> yeah. let you go. Yes. <laughs> But if you at home have not read Batman Hush or Detective 1000, they are both on the service, so you should absolutely check them out. 